Hey everybody, welcome back to the SAS course. And in this video, we're gonna be walking through one of our final projects, the landing page. And then once I walk you through, show you what it is that we're gonna be building, uh, we're gonna jump into our code editor and we're going to start working with it and coding it up, styling it in SAS right away. So let's jump in. So here's the final version of the landing page. It's a fictional site, but I'm actually using the branding of my company, Brightside Studios, for a number of different reasons. One, it's a good logo I had on hand, and I wanted to use the branding color scheme to show you that you can play around with the, the branding. If you wanna swap out your logo for something else, you could swap the branding really easily in your variables in SAS. And we're using kind of a navigation bar here on the top right, uh, a monospace font, uh, you know, some nice typography and some nice, you know, subtle branding elements, the, the orange here uh, that kind of fades in on hover. We have a big hero image here just to set the tone. We have some text here, a headline with some text and a call to action link, a little widget sidebar on the side for a lead magnet, you know, the seven things coffee shop owners need to know before hiring a web designer to build your website, send me the checklist to click that, you know, uh, you could have a modal window pop up or send them to another page, have them add their name and email, add them to your email list and send them a PDF with the checklist or, you know, a seven day email course, something like that to uh, get a warm lead to add value to them so that eventually you might be able to book a, a consultation or a road mapping session with them. And then below here we have a big box with uh, a grid based layout with a big heading spanning the entire width. And then in there you can put different elements, uh, you know, explaining what makes your coffee shop stand out. You know, the environment, the culture, you know, the food obviously and the coffee and you know, the way that your um, employees communicate and speak to and build relationships with the customer. Something like that, you know, whatever it is you want. You can have this be a different uh, themed landing page. It doesn't have to be a coffee shop niche, so to speak, as uh, as I've built this one to be. It could be, you know, uh, a mechanic niche, you know, if you're building websites for mechanics or, you know, real estate niche or something like that, whatever it is you want it to be. Uh, so I'm just using the coffee niche theme because if you know me, I really like uh, espresso and making lattes on my espresso machine. I like nice coffee shops. So I wanted to play with something that was pleasant to me as I enjoy my own lattes and such. So this is a very minimal theme. It's using a grid weight based layout. We are using uh, bourbon, neat and bitters for a number of different things. We are using SAS very heavily and um, you can see here the site's really quite nice it's minimal it's beautiful and you could use it for a web design portfolio you can use it for uh, an agency type website uh, a niche company a company that serves a specific niche so in this example coffee shop brand experts so if your freelancing company or you know your agency was niched down to only serve coffee shops or dentists real estate agents you know things like that that's what this theme is all about so we're going to jump in and we're going to start coding this up in our code editor. So let's jump into our code editor and do that right now. So here in Adam, I pulled in the I landing page student folder. So you go ahead and do that as well. There's going to be two folders in that course files, the student version and the final version. The final version is what you just saw. And the student version is a more trimmed back, a very empty version of it. The HTML looks like this. It's a very plain basic semantic setup. We get the you know logo or the title of the page. We have a navigation, we have the big image in there. And then just semantic text, just text that flows, you know, and it makes sense as you go through it. You don't need styles to understand what this page is all about. First and foremost, that's important. Your HTML must be meaningful and semantic. And the HTML looks like this. We just have some straightforward HTML5. It's hooking in a couple Google fonts. The style sheet is pulling in app.css, which will ultimately or eventually be in your CSS folder, which is currently empty. We have a div wrapper, a header, navigation, uh, a few sections, articles, sides, uh, more articles. And then at the bottom, we should have a uh, footer. And that's about it. So it looks like this in terms of the HTML. In terms of your folder structure, CSS folder is empty. Images folder has the two uh, versions of the logo. One is the normal one, one is the retina version. And one is just the cafe image. It's very big, so it's kind of hard to see here. There you go. Then we have our SAS folder with the structure, zero plugins with the directory, one base with the directory, two layouts with the directory, three modules with the directory. All of them are empty. They're just there for you to, to add and import your SAS partials. 
We have mixins. You want to add some mixins as you go. I only have one in there right now, which is the Retina Media Query to swap out that logo. Variables. We have the two Google fonts there and we have the brand. So I have primary dark and light. These are my brand colors for Brightside Studios, orange, dark gray, and pale. You could swap those to be your own brand colors. You can add your own variables too, if you wish. It's totally up to you. And the app SAS global directory that pulls in the variables, mix-ins, and then all the different directories. Zero plugins, one base, two modules, and three, or sorry, two layouts and three modules. I almost nailed that. And then any additional SAS you want below for plugins and such. So that is the structure. You should be up to speed at this point. Now what we're gonna do is start right out and open up our compiler. So open up terminal or open up the code kit. So if you want code kit, you know, you can go ahead and open that up here. All you gotta do is add a new project like so. Find your project. This one for me is landing page student. All you do is you pull that in there like so and it's going to start watching all of your SAS right in there. App.sass is going to compile. You can change the generated output file to output to CSS. So then now it will output to CSS and app.css. Anytime you trigger a change or update your SAS, that will automatically update right there and add it to your CSS folder. Also a cool thing with CodeKit, little side note here is, if you wanted, you can actually optimize the images. So if I just select all of these and click optimize, it's gonna go ahead and actually crunch those images and uh, compress them as much as possible. So the initial size of the three images together was 1.1 megabytes, and it is currently one megabyte after optimization. So it reduced the image size by 2.4%. So I mean, that's something. If you have a lot of images, 2.4% can really be adding up and uh, you know it saves uh, the front end user time for loading your site. Just cool things that you can do in CodeKit more than compiling SAS. So that's SAS in the CodeKit. If you want to use that as the compiler, I'm actually going to use terminal. So I'm going to change the directory into my desktop. I'm going to grab the iLanding page student version, and then I'm going to tell SAS to watch for SAS and output to CSS. And that will be running. It should already have created an app CSS folder and a map. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do is install Bourbon, Neat, and Bitter. So we need that installed into our Zero plugin so that we can use those throughout the development of our, of our project. So I'm gonna open a new terminal window here and I'm simply just gonna say Bourbon because I already have these installed on my machine. I already used the RubyGem package manager. We did that earlier in the course, so you should already have it on your machine as well. Uh, and if you don't, refer back to those videos of installing frameworks and that will be good to go for you. So uh, we should be at the same place right now. Bourbon install. Before you do that, actually, you want to change your directory into your zero plugins folder. So CD desktop I student uh, landing page student version. Uh, we're gonna be looking for the SAS folder and then zero plugins, bam. Bourbon install, that should install Bourbon for me. Bam, just like so, beautiful. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're already in the zero plugins directory. We're going to say neat install, install neat, and bitters install, and that will install bitters. And if you've been following along, bitters creates a folder called base rather than bitters, which is kind of, uh, they must have a reason for it. It's kind of interesting. Uh, but base, bourbon, and neat are now installed to your zero plugins. The first thing you need to do is add that to your plugins dash directory SAS partial. And you do that like so. Import bourbon slash bourbon. It's going to find the bourbon folder uh, directory and then it's going to find the bourbon SAS partial, SCSS partial. We don't need to add the extension because SAS is smart and knows what that is. Now, the next one we want to import is neat. So neat slash neat, same deal. The neat directory, neat SCSS, and that's going to pull in all of the, the neat uh, files. And then the last one, but not least, is to import bitters, which is base slash base. So the base directory and then a base SCSS, which you can see is importing its own uh, SAS or SCSS partials right there for you to use throughout your project. Save that, it will compile your SAS. It's compiled my directory uh, and it might add some CSS here. So it's gonna add, you can see plugins and third-party styles. We've got um, this would be bourbon bitters. That's gonna pull in kind of a bit of a reset so that now 
your page, your site is going to look a little more clean. It's going to normalize uh, the CSS and add a few base styles there uh, already. So it's cleaned up quite nicely. Now what we need to do is we've already told SAS to watch for changes. And so let's jump right in and start styling this uh, bad boy up. 